Hey guys, welcome back. This is Dan and you're watching I Allegedly. And by popular demand, uh, I've got him back, guys. I've got the one and only Gerald Salente from the Trends Journal here. And we're going to talk today about the real State of the Union. And uh, guys, I am thrilled that he's here. Don't forget to like the video, share this with everybody. And uh, everybody needs to subscribe to the Trends Journal. I subscribe to the Trends Journal. You can subscribe yearly, you can subscribe monthly, but like Gerald says, there are no robots. You cannot have a robot do a trend, an economic, local, global, or economic trend in any way, shape, or form. And it takes real people and real writers and real researchers to put that together. And it's absolutely worth it, guys. The link will be in the video description below. Take a look at the Trends Journal today. And again, they have a monthly option now too, which is super cool. But uh, you guys should sign up for this because it, it is must reading. And uh, and Gerald's on uh, YouTube as well. His videos are fantastic. He gets Judge Napolitano on uh, once a week and they do a rant that uh, I, I, I have found myself laughing sometimes so hard with you two guys going at it that I have to pull over in the car when I listen to that in the car. But uh, absolutely fantastic. But guys, check out the Trends Journal today. Hello, champ. I'm glad you're here, Gerald. So. Great Thanks to have twice. you back. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Uh, you know, uh, with uh, I, I, I got the greatest thing sent to me this morning where they were talking about Biden and they called him Leiden, where everything's a lie out of his mouth. And I thought, oh, and this is perfect timing for Gerald, because as we talk about the State of the Union, it was it was very difficult to watch that last night. And I really was excited to get your opinion on everything. Where do you think everything's at right now? We've got you know, an economy that's completely upside down. The CEO of Bank of America steps forward and says, hey, you got to be prepared not only for the government to default, but for more people and businesses to default. And there's so much to talk about. So um, let's get into it. You know, what do you think right now with the state of the economy right now? Do you think that we are in serious trouble right now? Or do you think that we're, we're coming out of this like the administration is telling us? Everything's going to be perfect. The 64% of the people that are living paycheck to paycheck, it'll probably go down to 63.9. You know, if it's only going to get worse. Yeah, look at the uh, Wall Street Journal. Front page. Trade deficit hits record. Oh, all right. Absolutely. Trade deficit hits record. Tracking trends is the understanding of where we are, how we got here, to see where we're going. So you could thank scum that people call presidents that sold this country out to get paid off. Why would anybody pay a warmongering piece of garbage scum like little Billy Clinton $300,000 an hour to bullshit at the Goldman Sachs gang or any of the other conferences he was brought to speak to. It's payoff. Absolutely. This, this is the slime ball that gave us NAFTA. Oh, you have a trade deficit? You mean used to make products in America? No, no, no. You were going to make them in Mexico. Oh, and you're going to bring China into the World Trade Organization? Wonder why we have a trade deficit. You look at China's GDP before that scumbag, every, that every time he got caught with his pants down, it's bombs away over Baghdad. The murderous <laughs> little Billy Clinton, another arrogant boy that if you called him out man to man, he wouldn't know whether to piss his shit. But boy, is he tough with all his guys around him and kills a lot of people. Yeah, the Bill Clinton, that every time he got caught doing something, killing people all across Iraq and Madeline, not all that bright, the former UN ambassador on Leslie Stahl, 60 minutes, Leslie Stahl asks her, is the price of the death of 500,000 Iraqi children because of Bill Clinton's actions worth the price? And she said, yes, it is. That's, That's the Bill Clinton that brought us into the World Trade Organization. People forget, Dan, about the Battle of Seattle. 
You remember what? that one? No. What was that one? The Battle of Seattle took place in 1999. They were bringing China into the World Trade Organization and they were having a WTO meeting in Seattle. Some 46,000 people took to the streets to protest, bringing them into the WTO. But like they always do, they have these agents provocateurs, these guys dressed in black in perfect shape, you know, smashing a couple of windows and, and blowing up a car. That's mm -hmm. what became the news. If everybody forgot about why the people were protesting, because they knew that we'd be losing our jobs. China by then, it was a nothing. Again, you look at their GDP from 1970. They come into the World Trade Organization officially two weeks after 9-11, and boom, their GDP escalates. It just skyrocketed at that yep. point. So they sold us out. So you're asking me, you don't have to look any further than this. Oh, America's GDP. Oh, only 70% of it is consumer spending. Only 11% of our GDP is manufacturing. We're I can't open. figure out why we have such a big trade deficit. Maybe we should ask the White House. Now, so much is happening with, let's, let's just take one step to banking right now. I think that the banks are in trouble. I think oh, yeah. that they are, getting ready you know the after 2008 everybody thinks that 2008 was six weeks long and and we just got it we, it, it ended and everything went back to normal no we've never really recovered from that point with the banks and what the banks did this time instead of bailing people out they're going to have bail-ins where they're going to take depositors money and i think that that is definitely going to happen i think that people are going to lose money I think that that people need to have alternatives to pay bills, and uh, and and this is a very precarious time. How do you feel about the banks right now, Joe? Well, let's go back to what you said about you know uh, two thousand and eight. We took out the domain name, by the way, in two thousand and seven, the Panic of 08. We saw wow. it. Wow. And the again, when we're talking about the government system, it's a crime syndicate. Go back. People call it, it. It's not. They're murderers and thieves. So let's go on the thieving end. We're talking about the banksters. By the way, this was one of the covers of the uh, Trends Journal back in 2011 when it was um, uh, a quarterly. <laughs> Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase. Not much has changed. And so let's go back. The Federal Reserve dumped in, according to the Levy Institute at Bard College, $29 trillion to the central banks, to the banks. $29 wow. trillion. We're too big to fail. I'm Jamie Dimon. I only make $35 million a year. You're a piece of crap. All he you is. are is a plantation worker of Slavelandia. We're too big to fail. All right? You're talking about the bankster system? Now let's go back into the facts. Hey, they just raised interest rates again, huh? Oh, yeah. yes. Now, one of our forecasts is a office building bust. They are now bragging. This is the crap that the mainstream media puts out. They're bragging that the office occupancy right now in America at the top 10 cities, according to Castle with a K, is over 50%. It's 50.4%. Okay, wait a minute. Half the people aren't going back to work. They're not exactly. commuting. And the ones that are going back, they're only going back maybe two or three days a week. All the businesses that depended on commuters, they're out of business. The dry cleaners, the people used to go to lunch. Hey, no more happy hours. What about all those businesses? Oh, and now your office occupancy rate. Now all those leases are coming up and they're saying, I don't need 15, 20 stories. I only need three. Let's Absolutely. go back to raising interest rates. Now all, and again, this thing was going down in 2019. In New York, east side, west side, all around the town for rent, for rent, for rent, for rent, for rent. They overbuilt. 100%. Now 
interest rates went up. Oh, you got these variable rate mortgages, right? Oh, and now less people are uh, taking out leases and they're and the other ones are cutting way back. You're going to, the banks, or oh, the banks funded this stuff, right? Oh, and the banks also are involved in this stuff. They're also investors in this stuff. There's going to be an office building bus crash that's going to bring down, no one is talking about it. No one Nobody's is talking. Nobody's talking about it. No one's talking about the retail centers, the malls. You know, here in Southern California, I live near a beach community. And I live through near all the tourist areas that are vacant, 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 vacant nail salon, vacant, vacant, vacant one pizza place, vacant, vacant, vacant coffee place. And, you know, we saw it last summer. We saw that these places were done, but who's making the mortgage payments on this? I, I'll tell you, a friend of mine that I went to junior high with runs a foreclosure company here in Southern California. They had one project where the owner had financed and leveraged 64 properties with over a hundred million dollars in loans that he was defaulting on. And think about the people that were open, the sandwich shops that were paying their rent and the guy with the mortgage is not making the payment. So you're going to see a collapse, unlike anything we've seen in the past. And I think that these, these office buildings, everybody I've talked to with all the layoffs. And, and again, there were more today in the news. Another company announced it. Zoom announced it yesterday. Think about the Zoom, this platform that saved Everybody during COVID shenanigans uh, came out, and uh, now they're laying off 10% of their staff. So it's it's continuing, Gerald. And I, I think we have not seen the beginning of it, but who's making those mortgage payments on those buildings? That's the thing I just don't get. San Francisco, you know, is a, is a hellhole, and uh, the vacancy rate there is so high. Why anybody would want to have a business there in the first place with people sleeping on the streets and crapping on the streets and, and just the... the the, the moral decay that we've seen in these some of these big, beautiful cities, oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. You know? No, you, you nailed it. You're 100% right in everything you said. And again, now interest rates are going up, and these are variable rate mortgages. And then you got all these junk bonds in this stuff. Absolutely. So this thing is going to go down really big. But don't worry <laughs> about it. They'll bail out the banks because the banks are in control of our, our country. Here. The Fed head, the former Fed head, Janet Yellen, is now our Treasury Secretary. How stupid could anybody be to see who's running our country? Well, I used to call Reserve. it Grandma Yellen. Grandma <laughs> Yellen needs to retire, needs to retire and go knit someplace a long, yeah. long time ago. So, uh, you know, Gerald, this is, it's ridiculous. People, businesses are, are tapped out. Uh, no one's buying what they used to buy. The average consumer debt has completely skyrocketed to the highest level. What's it? Nine hundred eighty-five uh, uh, billion dollars in credit yeah. card debt right now. And the other thing is to throw this into it with car loans. I was shocked to learn that car loans went. The average car loan went from two point nine percent a year ago. A year ago at this time to eight percent. And then you add the people with bad credit that start at nine, 10, 11 to 22%, 23% for an auto loan because they have to have a job. But people are, if, if they hiccup and they can't make these payments, this is going to just collapse. It's going to be so catastrophic. And the, the video that we just dropped on my channel was the banks talking about defaults and, and Brian Moynihan saying that we need to prepare for this. And they're stockpiling money. And anytime they do things like this, it's because it's going to happen. They don't, no one's practicing when it comes to the banking. No one's practicing with any of this stuff. And I and I believe nothing they tell us because all they tell us is that it's great. So a little bit of a rant there. But uh, but you know the the office buildings are going to be uh, it's going to be absolutely catastrophic when this goes down because what do you do with a vacant you know 15 story building in Irvine, California? I don't know what you do with that. I don't know what you do with these retail places that. Nobody can afford to, to start a business right now. And with all the, you know, here in California, we've got so much uh, regulation and, and it's just, it's, it's so, uh, it's so difficult for these small businesses to get started in the first place. Anyways, I could, I could, I covered so much right there, but share your thoughts on all this stuff. Well, let's go back to the office building bust. The BS they're putting out there is going to turn the, they're going to turn these into apartments. No, you're you not. Can't. The stuff, everything, according to the data, buildings built in the last 50 years, you can't turn into apartments. 
So that's a lot of BS. And talking about how they keep lying to us, remember they said that inflation was temporary? And yes. then it was transitory? So the, again, and going back to Janet Yellen, I'm making this point because the Federal Reserve is in control of our country. We have the former head of the Federal Reserve that is now our Treasury Secretary. How, how, how can people be so blind to see this? And by the way, the scumbag that gave us the Federal Reserve is the same guy who put us into World War I and gave us the federal income tax, Woodrow Wilson. There was no federal income tax before this. And now what is it, 40, 50%, depending on yeah. what kind of money you're making? Absolutely. It was nothing. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is, and then you look at the, the budget that they just passed, the $1.7 trillion, over half, over half, goes to the military industrial complex and intelligence complex over half over half so looking at the economy and where it's going as i say when all else fails they take you to war and that's what they're doing now this this uh, this this war in um uh ukraine Yes. They just keep ramping it up and ramping it up and ramping it up. America goes not abroad in search of monsters to destroy. That was John Quincy Adams. But now America goes anywhere and destroys anything. We have over 900 military bases throughout the world. We're opening up four new military bases now in the Philippines. I'm sure that we all care about what goes on in the Philippines. And my God, if China overtook Taiwan, I don't know how I'd ever sleep another day in my life because this has only been going on since the, what, the Ming dynasty and before. Yes, exactly. exactly. You know, one oh. thing that was funny with uh, Janet Yellen was uh, the job numbers came out. They thought that we were gonna have 185,000 jobs added last uh, month. They added 500,000, 517. It was great. It was monstrous. We have the best unemployment ever. I, to save my life, do not believe that. I, I don't believe these numbers at all that, uh, um, that, uh, uh, that, that it's as good as they say it is at all. And then Janet Yellen steps forward yesterday and says, we're not in a recession uh, because of how great the job numbers are. And uh, you can't have a recession when things are like this. Again, they keep renaming things, Gerald. You know, have you ever heard of the term growth recession? That's their new term. It's a growth recession. What is that? What, what, Actually, what, let's, let's stay on the numbers. In this week's Trends Journal, we showed what a farce the numbers are. There were 2.5 million lost jobs. Yeah, that, that's true. That, that's, I, I read that as well. Yeah. Right. Now, let's go to the other facts. In December, November, they started firing temporary workers. They fired 35,000 temporary workers, temp workers in December. Wait a minute. That's the holiday season when you're hiring them and you fire 35,000. Oh, and when you look at the numbers, retail sales are way down compared to where they thought they were going to go. And you're telling me the economy is going up and jobs are going up. And in January, which is one of the biggest months where you start firing people, you tell me over 500,000 people were hired? Oh, no. Those are adjustable rate assessments by the Labor Department. It's oh, you ridiculous. mean the same Labor Department that adjusted them last January and were off by over 100,000 jobs that they said were created that didn't create them, that are now creating this one? Again, this was done just before Biden's State of the Union speech, where they could brag about how good the economy is doing. The numbers are a total farce. Again, we're looking at your trade deficits. You're looking at, by the way, when you look at temporary, temporary workers are the first ones to get fired when a recession starts. You go back to uh, the panic of 08, they started firing them in 2007. Before the dot-com bust, they started firing temporary workers. So that's your signal of how bad it is. 
The equity markets have no relationship at all to the real world. You have 1% of the people, 1%, 1% out of 332 million Americans own over 50% of the equity markets. They own 54%. When you put the 10% in, they own 90%. And they got richer during all this time. During the COVID shenanigans, they got richer and these billionaires made more money. It was it's the billionaires, crazy. the billionaires from two, from 2020 got $27 trillion richer, according to Oxfam. Yeah, it's it, the numbers are staggering, Gerald, when you see this. And it's just it's unbelievable. But the middle class is Gone. getting ripped out. It's done. again. 64% of the people living paycheck to paycheck. Completely. So, and and that, so, the, that's the other thing is the numbers are, you know, um, you know, here in Southern California, the area you're in, you know, more affluent areas, 100 grand doesn't go as far. No, it really no. doesn't. But in middle America, that these people that are that achieve that level and they can't get by. And if they lose a paycheck or somebody got sick or the car broke down, they're in trouble with that. And that and you're seeing this in every way, shape and form. And it, I think that the consumer credit, the, the fact that people are using that to pay bills and not buy things, that's a bad sign. And also we're seeing oh, yeah. signs that the banks are tightening the credit restrictions right now, where they're taking people with a $10,000 credit card and say, okay, Gerald, now you, your credit line's now 8,000, but I owe 10 on it. Well, you better pay $2,000 down and then some, so you can use the card again. That's that's what's going on right now. And people don't want to look at that. It's look over here and don't yeah. worry, honey, we'll borrow our way out of this. And my grandfather used to always say, you can't borrow yourself out of debt. And uh, it didn't make sense when I was a kid, but now it makes total sense because, you know, it, it, it people just don't get it. They think that the, the sun is going to shine, you know, in just a few months. And I don't think it is personally. You can't borrow yourself out of debt. Tell that to the United States government, which is over 30, what, $31 trillion in debt. Yeah. And then Janet Yellen steps forward again and says, Hey, we need to get, this is ridiculous that we're coming upon the debt ceiling. She wrote a letter to Congress again, that I shared a couple of weeks ago. That was ridiculous. We need to get rid of this. Imagine if you gave an imbecile, um, you know, unlimited credit line. Well, you'll pay it off. What's the minimum payment? What's the minimum payment? Well, it gets to a point that they can't afford it. Well, if they didn't have the debt ceiling, which is still ridiculous that they waste all the money that they do, if they didn't have that, imagine what these guys would spend money on. It would, it would be insane. It would be unbelievable. So let's go so, back to the debt. Interest rates went up. Now you're paying more on your debt for the national debt and every, all the other debt. And then you have to look globally. Look at the emerging markets that borrowed all this money in dollars. And they got to pay it back as interest rates keep going up. Again, that's the other thing. Before I get into the dollar, it's it going back to one of the articles in the Trends Journal we've been doing now. This is the 27th week or the massive layoffs each week. Now you get all these people being laid off from top jobs. A lot, a lot in the tech sector and oh, from investment firms, on and on and on. You know, every, no industry, every, every industry. Every industry. Now, how are they going to pay their mortgages? How exactly. are they going to pay their car loans when you're fired? And, and, and I want to make this clear too. I thought, I had forecast that there was going to be a major crash in 2012. I was wrong. You know why? They didn't teach me about zero interest rate and a thing called quantitative easing in economics 101 or graduate school. They made up this crap. What I'm saying is that they're going to make up anything they can to keep the bubble that's ready to burst a long time ago floating. Number two, going back to the dollar, the dollar is done. It's only going to be a matter of time before it collapses. The you're seeing you're you're hearing Saudi Arabia saying no we're gonna we're gonna we they're doing a trade with China now they're they're, yeah. they're paying for the oil in uh, yuan yeah uh, and and one country after another they've had enough of the dollar they've had enough of the West's submission of their lives so there's going to be a breakaway from it and it's going to happen sooner rather than later which is why I'm again there. Are, 
as you know, in the magazine, there are zero advertisers. We don't take advertisers. So when I speak about things, it's not like we're pumping anything for anybody. Absolutely. 100%. That's why to me, gold, gold, silver, and Bitcoin are my, my three biggest investments. And, and to me, gold is going to skyrocket because this global economy is going to crash big time. And then there's the heating up of the wars. And if you don't believe me about gold, why don't somebody ask the central banksters that had a record year of buying gold last year? And Absolutely. the reason they had a record year of buying gold last year is because they know how bad it is. Absolutely, Gerald. You're, you've seen it was uh, la in, in uh, December. They had a record month. But in 2022, I just read this this morning. It was a record year for central banks buying uh, and stockpiling gold right now. And if that right. doesn't tell people that they should be into this and, oh, gold hasn't moved, gold's going to explode. And I yep. think silver is going to explode finally, too. And, and that was one of the questions somebody wrote me as they wanted your opinion on, you know, the suppression of silver and paper silver and J.P. Morgan. And I, the the what we have been told, what I've read is that based on the paper silver, there's not enough physical silver to back it up. So eventually there would be a day of reckoning when you'd have to have a realistic price to silver. And, uh, you know, how do you feel about that? To me, silver prices should be way, way higher. And, and for the reasons it's used in from high tech to heavy industry, as they talk about climate change, more and more silver going into, into solar panels and on. And all the all the you know computer hand the elite the phone. electric cars everything else it's just everything. the uses and, of and silver unlike gold like a computer your hand cell phone you, it goes into the dump it's not like you're saving this stuff yes so to me the prices should be much higher and and so to me the the big when the when it crashes oh and again why are prices low. They rig the markets. And that's not that's not a conspiracy theory. A criminal organization called JP Morgan Chase has been convicted of five felonies. Count them. One of them was rigging the precious metals market that they got a slap on the wrist for in 2019 with a lousy $900 million fine after Think of all the money three years. They made. they made so much money from that. That was like a parking ticket. That's oh, okay. exactly it. And that's yeah. what America's become. It's a slap on the wrist for the bigs and prosecution to the fullest of we, the people of slave land. Yeah, exactly. Where were you? You trapped, your backlight, your, the light over your license plate was off. Paul, where were you? How many drinks did you have? Stand on your head, repeat the alphabet backwards. You're going to jail. You're 0.1% over a made up stupid number that we came up with. It's process. Look what they just did. $80 billion to the IRS so they could go after the little people. People better grow up. It's That's a the largest syndicate that's in charge of this country. They're the murderers largest, and thieves. The largest amount of people that they went after were people that made under uh, $50,000. Yeah. That was shocking when I heard that. And, you know, one other thing about the layoffs I wanted to get you, which is a, this is a staggering statistic that I covered a couple of days ago in that between all the tech companies, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, um, and there's one more in there, uh, they put together exit packages that total $4.6 billion. Think about that, Gerald. They, they'd rather pay out today $4.6 billion than keep these employees around. There's that much. That they much see that on the horizon, how bad things are going to be with employees, that they'd rather have these exit packages. And when you add that up, that's a huge figure. It's unbelievable. And then go back to 2019. Amazon, Facebook. Alphabet, uh, 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 Alphabet. Yeah, Meta, everybody, all those. Buying you know. up all of the office buildings all around New York. 
all over the country, building warehouses, Amazon, one after another, exploding, exploding. And now it's shrinking big and they have all of this debt because people aren't going to go back to work. What happened was when, when they locked down everybody and people are forced to stay home month after month, they're saying to themselves, holy shit, I'd be getting up at five o'clock in the morning to go to work, being an hour and a half each way, two hours in traffic. How the hell am I doing that? I got to be out of my mind. I'm not going to do that anymore. And now with the Zoom world and the, and the, and the new internet world and, 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 and it keep expanding, you, know, I, you don't have to go in anymore. You know, I have my employees and I'm, I'm, and not for any other reason, you know, their families, whatever. Yeah, come, you just come, come in three days a week. You know, I don't care. I don't see them that much. I don't care. And guess and, what? And, and, and it's not even, done. I'm not doing it for rental reasons. I'm saying, yeah, it's fine. You don't have to drive an hour in, you know, stay home. You know, they're doing their work. They, they, they produce. So what I'm saying, this is not going to, oh, that's the other bullshit that you used to hear. When they started locking down everything in 2020, by Labor Day, it'll come back. Yeah, it'll come back. Remember, you say it'll come back. It's not coming back. It's over. So it again, is. going back to the banks again. Why would anybody keep money in a bank when they're making money on your money and giving you nothing? So now, I believe as this. War keeps ramping up. All of a sudden, one day they're going to say, like, we're on now. Gerald, we have to take a break now. I, we just heard that the Russians hacked the banking system. You just lost all of your money. But don't worry about it. We're coming out with a digital currency. They're going to come out with a digital currency for some reason or another so they could come up with a new currency so they could manufacture that they don't own this debt anymore or anything else. And they're going to steal all our money from us. I tell the story of what happened on 9-11. <clears throat> I'm watching CNBC and it was this arrogant guy. He's not there anymore. He died. And he said, we're <laughs> going to take a break now. You know, and I used to be on CNBC a lot back in those days. I used to be on Oprah, the Today Show, Good Morning America. I used to be on everybody. I remember and all that. They, they all blacklisted me because I wouldn't swallow their shit and wouldn't tell, they would tell me what to do. So I'm not, gonna, I mean, you got the wrong guy. Anyway, I'm watching this, I'm having a cup of coffee. And they say, yeah, he said, they say a plane hit the, the World Trade Center, but let's not get excited about this. We're going to take, we're going to cut the we're gonna tell our reporter down there. And the reporter's talking, blah, blah, blah. And they show that thing of boom, and the building explodes, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I know New York. I'm a, you know, I'm a New Yorker. They're saying the planes are going down the Hudson River. About 35 miles north of New York, in Verplank, New York, on the Hudson River is Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant. I say to myself, if they hit that power plant, if these planes are going down the Hudson River and they blow up that nuclear power plant, there's going to be chaos like you can't believe. This is what's going on in my head as this is going on. I called my girlfriend up at the time. I was living in Rhinebeck, New York. Her name was Marie Pierre Astier. Marie Pierre's brother, Francois, was the left shoulder of Jacques Chirac and Mitterrand, the presidents of France. He was their wow. bodyguard. My close combat teacher, John Perkins, used to go to close combat. Uh, 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 we, we, we used to teach me. I had my own. I taught close combat for my own school for a lot of years. Um, he used to go to Palace Lise and work out with these guys. I call up Marie Pierre the first day. I said, Marie Pierre, they just hit the World Trade Center. Go to the bank and get your money out. Because I'm thinking if they hit this power plant, this is what I'm doing is everybody's freaking out. She goes, Gerald, you're kidding. I said, I'm not kidding. Go over it. They wouldn't give her a money. Key bank. Wow. And, and Marie Pierre being who she is and where she came from, she fought and screamed and yelled until she got her money. I call up my, I, I had certificates of deposit in those days. And I'm telling everybody this because they'll steal your money. I call up the bank. It was in Massachusetts. It's been bought out. I forgot who bought it. You know, it was a big bank in the day. Mr. Salenti, we can't give, transfer your certificates of deposit. I want to transfer to Rhinebeck Bank. I told cash out of them. 
you trade it on Wall Street and Wall Street is closed. Wow. So in other words, screw you, you're not getting your money. I had my guns gold in a getaway plan. I'm about four hours from, from uh, the Canadian border. And those days you had maps. And by the way, I still don't carry a cell phone. I still use maps because I did work for the cellular telecommunications industry going back to 1994 and know about radio frequency radiation and on and on and on. But anyway, and it's very dangerous. And I, I just saw your video on that. It, it re reminded me not to sleep with my phone. next. To me. I, I have none. But anyway, so now I had my guns gold in a getaway plan. I got the rest of the money out of the Rhinebeck Bank. I bought jerry jugs, filled them up with, with gas, had maps to back roads to Canada, because I know I'm not going to be able to go through the main roads and I'm going to sneak over the border, because I figure if they blow up this nuclear power plant, I'm getting the hell out of here. And from Canada, I could go anywhere. I had my guns, my gold, and my getaway plan. And I'm telling everybody now, you better prepare for the worst. Because... Because if the worst doesn't happen, you lost nothing. You're ready. If the worst happens and you're not prepared, you lose everything. And I believe there's going to be a climatic event that's going to bring down the markets, the economy. They'll make something up and they'll steal our money. And again, why would you keep it in the bank when they're giving you nothing and making money on your money? Absolutely. Absolutely. I The other... Uh, it, it, it's there's so much to this right now. I really believe that. I think that, uh, um, you know, with the banking system, the problems that we have, uh, everything that happened uh, after 9-11, all the all the points to a digital dollar. Think of think of how bad this would be, Gerald, if you and I were, had a digital dollar. Let's say it's an ATM style card. And wow, well, Gerald, you buy a lot of coffee. You buy this. You buy that. Or the farmer, we don't want you. To, why are you buying so many pigs? Why are you buying so many of this? They're going to limit and watch how people spend money and then shut it off. Why, you know, why you buy a lot of auto parts? What's that about? You know, it's imagine the the only freedom is having cash. The only freedom is to be able to take cash and go to dinner or buy an expensive bottle of wine if that's what your thing is, or or anything, and having the freedom to go do that. And once that's eliminated, then it's big brother forever. And, and with, without, you know, without any uh, con personal control that they can just click, flip off at a moment's notice. That's what people don't get. Broke people, oh, I would love free money. I would love to use the card to pay for everything. It, it's going to be awful when that happens. And I believe it's going to happen very soon. Oh, it is going to happen. The, the Chinese are doing it already. You know, they, they're, they're doing it already. And, and one country after another is doing it. And again, there's a whole other side of it, too. You, you, you got a big part of it. The big part, the biggest part. They know every dollar you spent, where you spent it. And like you said, what you spent it on. So they could get their tax dollars. That's what they're most concerned about. Because politicians never work a day in their life. All they do is suck off the public tit. I was exactly. the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 26 years old. I ran major political campaigns in Westchester County at a graduate school, the richest county in America at the time. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I nobody could believe when I quit. I, I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. We still had, I mean, I'm a young guy, I'm 26 years old, I was standing in the back of the chamber, and he got a clown, a sergeant at arms, Senator Frank Smith, Senator Tom McNeil. I said, what's the matter, man? I said, a cat can't open the door by himself. What's this, what's this bullshit? <laughs> and then my buddies would follow the senators to their seat, pull out the chair and help them sit down. I said, I'm not going to do this stuff, man. I wouldn't do it. You know, Gerald, you don't do that. You're not going to make it. I said, I'm not, this isn't my trip. My buddy, Brian Donahue, may he rest in peace. His wife, uh, Mary, became the lieutenant, lieutenant governor under, under Pataki. You know, yes. I, I was at the top in there. I know what the system is. The politicians are the lowest pieces of shit that you could imagine. These We haven't left school. Remember when you were in school, the principal tells you what to do. You do what the principal, I'm the teacher. You do what the principal tells you to do. The principals are our politicians and our teachers are the bureaucrats. We haven't left school. How can anybody look up to an arrogant little boy 
like you got over there that Gavin Newsom. How could you look up to a little Chucky Schumer? Swallow the crap from a Lindsey Graham. How could you be so gutless to take orders from these nothings, these arrogant nothings that are robbing us of our life, our liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that totally. destroyed our Declaration of Independence. You know, Governor Newsom, they, he thinks he's going to be Governor president. Newsom, I'm a governor. Don't forget to call him governor, right? That's the bullshit that yeah. they put in your head. It's ridiculous oh, because this state is such a mess right now. I know. There's, I mean, you've got some of the highest high-end cities like Newport Beach with riddled with homeless people. Yep. It, it is unbelievable how this state has fallen off the deep end. And yep. nobody wants to look at that. And this oh. guy thinks he's done a good job and he should run. Oh, the whole thinks show. He could give a shit. Oh, by the way, you know what's going on up here where I am? I'm where I am. I'm I'm 90 miles north of New York City on the Hudson River, Kingston, New York. This is the third Dutch settlement. There are more pre-revolutionary war stone buildings here than anywhere else. This whole area, the the the, the mid Hudson, the Hudson Valley over here, is being flooded with people from California. I bet. I bet flooded that. with people from California coming up. Flooded. More people leaving here than ever before. And, you know, you've got real estate prices are starting to, to, to crash. You're starting to see areas that people were, people in California went to Texas, they went to Vegas, and now you're seeing all those areas starting to crumble. Yep. And with, with the variable mortgages, how about this? They, they did a great study of people in Canada where they interviewed uh, 1,253 families in Canada to say, you know, how is the variable mortgages working out for you? And over 50% said that they're going to lose their home in 10 months because they're not going to be able to keep up with the payments that they've agreed to. And Gerald, people get these adjustable rate loans and have no idea what they're getting into. And because fixed rates went up so high, hit 7% at one point for good credit, and now they're taking the adjustables and now those are popping up and they cannot afford these house payments. You're seeing a huge problem in Vegas, a huge problem here. People that are cashing out it, and, and they're going to, the, to Texas, to your area, to everywhere else. They just don't want to be here. It's too expensive. Yeah. So yeah. I, we, you haven't, we have, this is happening globally where we're seeing it in Canada. We're seeing uh, real estate problems All in over. Australia, in the UK, everywhere. All over. Yeah. All so. over while they're, while they're sending, well, it's over $115 billion, $115 billion of our money that's been sent to Ukraine. Isn't that ridiculous? Fifteen billion. You know, my daughter said something to me. She said, my daughter's 25 and uh, uh, she's a, got a successful uh, YouTube channel and she's a, a great creator. But she said, gosh, dad, I'm so glad I'm not in elementary school because you'd be the one suing everybody right now with <laughs> everything that's going on. And uh, which is true. I, I, I just cannot believe what's happening in our school systems. Oh. Everything. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And then, you know, the greatest thing that happened, the state of Pennsylvania uh, uh, at the end of last month said that they are not going to look at uh, 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 college degrees for hiring right now. So all these people that have gone out and, and gotten a degree and spent $150,000, $300,000, all these huge sums that they will never be able to pay off. And then they go get these horrible jobs too. It's just people don't do the math. And the university system, you know, we could talk about that for two hours. It's ridiculous right now what the, what's going on with that. But uh, people don't take control of their own finances. People don't realize that they need to get out of debt, not spend any money. And uh, you're going to see a lot of problems. And the one thing I get is, hey, Dan, other people are going to lose their job. It's not going to be me. It's going to be other people. And that's not the case. People are going to, a lot of people are going to be unemployed. Uh, like the 80s. And we're, you know, and if they were realistic, I don't believe the 3.4%. If it would save my life, I wouldn't believe that number. No, no, it's, it's, a, it's a total lie. Again, the numbers, two, two and a half million people got laid off. You yeah. know, they, these are these are government data. And when you look at their data, they, they adjusted last year. There were 100,000 jobs off. There were going to be much more this year. So but going back to college, one of our top trends for 2023 is college collapse. Less and less people are going to be going, and um, 
And what, what are you going to get a degree in art history, gender studies? That's going to get you really far, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're going to go to college, you know, for a skill like engineering or become a doctor or something like that, you know, 100%. great. But, 100%. You know, to, but to do this other stuff is ridiculous and people can't afford it. And then again, what are you going to get a job driving an Amazon truck? Right. I mean, right. look, again, the numbers are there. You have 64% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Oh, and what businesses are going up the biggest? Hey, Dollar General, huh? Absolutely. That, Look at that's all the stores they're are buying food from. They're buying more food and supplies from the dollar store. And, and again, I buy stuff there because it's cheaper than going to the regular supermarket. And I hate paying more for anything right now. Yeah. But- but the fact I, that you know, I, I go, I go to, you know, I, I, one of the first books I worked on back in the 1980s was natural healing. It was a Warner book. And uh, so I, and I have an honorary degree from the national university of health sciences, the work I've done in complementary and integrative medicine. So I, I'm very careful about the products that I buy and I go to the health food store and I could afford it. And I say to myself, my God, how could people afford to buy this stuff? Mm -hmm. You're buying an orange, $2? No, it's crazy. Tomatoes for $2. Heads, people, you know, my subscribers, you know, send me pictures of, of heads of lettuce that are $10 at supermarkets and eggs that are- I, I that paid are $9 for eggs. Yeah, it's crazy. For organic eggs, $9. You know, so, but going back to the Dollar General- if you're going to be buying this food over there, now let's look at the big picture. Look at how this society has declined in so many different ways. You have obesity. 42% of Americans are obese. 70% are overweight. Look how, look, we are in such a steep decline of civilization. It blows me away. A buddy mm -hmm. of mine just came back from Portugal. And where he's, he's may move. And he went to, you know, he's showing me these beautiful pictures and he loves old things and going to the college, you know, the old churches and things. And he's showing me the architectural work and all the design and the beauty that was created. And now look at the shit that they build. Glass mm -hmm. and steel, ugly crap, cheap and ugly. Look at the way people dress. That's horrible. Look at the way yeah, I guy I go out to restaurants, nice restaurants, and guys my age wearing baseball caps and the younger people wearing them backwards. What are you gonna put a catcher's mask on next? <laughs> you know, I mean, look at the style. And you go back to my parents' generation, may they rest in peace. I have a photo of them, their wedding, 1934. Italian immigrants. My father worked in a fish store. My aunts and uncles, they worked as, you know, laborers and in manufacturing. You look at the picture of this wedding, the way they're dressed, the dignity. The Buffets, the Bezos, the Gates, they don't come close. Right. The billionaires don't come close to what this country used to be during the Great Depression. Gerald, people used to wear a suit to go to a ball game. They would yeah. wear a jacket to go to see baseball play. I mean, that was. That I, was and I grew up doing that. I, I grew up in the Bronx. You know, then we moved to Yonkers. We used to go to the Bronx. We get dressed up. You know, okay. and, and again, it, you look at it. So what I'm saying is we're talking about Dollar General. When I was a young guy, you could not imagine a store so ugly or crappy as a joint like that. Yeah, it's a. You it's went a into stuff. the local supermarket, the local grocery stores. They used to call them. Now that everything is a chain, drug mm -hmm. chains, hardware chains, stationary chains. When you went into the stores, you know they had design and beauty to them. We the only, so I'm making this point because the only way I see us reversing this is with a renaissance. When the Renaissance followed the Black Plague, the people got hip to we're killing ourselves because we're so damn stupid. They, when in Italy, they used to say when they creating the art of the past, alla Romana, alla Antica, in the manner of the Romans and the ancients, 
to describe the quality of what they were creating. And that's what we have to do now. We have to have a renaissance to bring back the spirit of the land of opportunity that's been gone. And caring for one another too. Absolutely. And being kind to people. It yeah. just, it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, common decency is a lost art form and it's terrible. And, you know, you, you brought up a great point. And one of the last questions a listener sent me, Douglas, was he, you know, the Fed has this imaginary 2% inflation target that they've talked about. And uh, Chairman Powell this week said, hey, we're going to get it to 5% and we're going to get it to our, our, our goal. What do you think? I mean, I think inflation yeah. is much higher than, than yeah. it is. Preposterous to think that it's at 2%. And, you know, the other thing, Gerald, is that, you, you know, you can have a high inflation, but I talk to my friends that are contractors my, that do every type of industry, you know, from medical to, to construction, they all have supply chain issue problems still, and it, which affects everything. And then when they go to buy things, it's much more expensive in their yep. business for everything that they do. And they can't project that. They can't say, okay, this is what we need. This is how much it's going to cost. It's costing everything. Insurance has gone up, health insurance, uh, car insurance, homeowners insurance, renters insurance. Everything is through the roof right now. And uh, it's just not slowing down. Property taxes are going up. Everything is going up. And they're talking about like, if, if they say it as an imaginary game, we're supposed to believe this and it, it's too much right now. But again, yeah. why would you believe them when they said it was temporary and, 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 and transitory inflation? And of course now transgendatory will be really be stupid about it. And for the real numbers you look at for inflation, you go to John Williams shadow stats. Absolutely. And Absolutely. They're, they're more than double what, what they're saying they are because they rigged the numbers The what housing prices went up, what 40%. No, we're not going to put that number in there. Uh, we people rent apartments and there's different we put it again just like the adjustable uh what they did with the uh the employment numbers so they're there so they're a total fraud oh and you're going to ask me what was the biggest mistake i made financially absolutely that was the qu the question that i wanted to ask you was yeah. and we'll, yeah. we'll end the I video didn't get in, i got into real estate late okay I should have bought real estate earlier i am very grateful for what i have i have three of the most historic buildings in america uh right right over there Right over there, across the street, I can almost hit it with a stone, is the courthouse, the Ulster County Courthouse. Kingston was the first capital of New York State. That building over there at that location, when this was the first capital, the Constitution that was written for, the Kingston, for New York State, over 70% of America's Constitution comes from that Constitution. And John Jay, the Supreme Court judge, yeah, he was a judge there. On the corner, it's the only corner in America with pre-revolutionary war stone buildings. Oh, that's awesome. And I am telling you, one day, one day I'm doing this show from your office. So I love we'll do, it. We'll do it that Sunday because that's the one thing I that I'm going to travel uh, quite a bit more this year. So that's one thing I'm going to do. But I, I just, great. Gerald, I, I want to thank you again. And everybody, it, this is will be money well spent. Go look at the Trends Journal. The link will be below. They have a monthly option now that they have not had. And uh, yearly, I, I pay for it yearly myself. But like Gerald says, you cannot do geopolitical trending for anything on uh, uh, the local economies, national economies, global economies without having real people and the writers that do it. And there's no advertising. It's just great stories. And everybody needs to check out uh, the Trends Journal. I, I absolutely love it. And sir, again, I call you champ because I, I totally think you're the champ and I, I am so grateful, sir, that you're here again. And uh, uh, thank you for everything. And uh, uh, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. And by the way, on uh, February 19th, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. And there's a big rally, uh, Rage Against the Machine uh, and the Great. War Machine. And uh, so if you people want to go down there, there'll be... Uh, Scott Ritter will be there, uh, uh, Jimmy Dore, a whole bunch of us. Uh, Great. I will, I will make sure I get links for all of that and get people information on that too. So thank everybody, thank you for being here. Uh, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out Gerald Salente and the Trends Journal. And again, he's got videos throughout the week. And uh, I, I love the weekly show with him and Judge uh, Napolitano. I never miss it. It is absolutely fantastic to watch. 
And uh, thank you guys for being here. Onward and upward. We'll see you real soon. Thank you again, Joe. Thank you. 